Go ahead. Let's stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The time is 6.05 and call to order the State Town of Pembroke Park Planning and Zoning Meeting on the 1st of June, 2023. Um, uh, Ms. Brown is absent. Ms. Clone? Here. Ms. Walker? Here. Mr. Schrader is absent and Ms. Cunningham? Here. Okay, we have quorum. Okay, um, are we, shall we wait on, because of the other two, for the selection of the board, or would That's you? That's up to them. That's up to you guys to make that decision. For the selection? Of the, the chair, the, chair, the, the vice, vice chair. chair. What, you were? I'm yeah. a vice chair. I've been on the board for a little over two years. You're the vice? Yes. So who was the? Chair, she had a baby. She hurt Brown. Is she, she coming back? No. So, so I mean, if, if it's okay. No, you, you're fine. You do what you have to do. You can take it. I don't. A chair, and then you be vice chair? Who wants to be vice chair? That's my question. Um, vice Can vice chair be someone that's not here? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, no. Go ahead. No. No. He has to be here? Oh. He has to be here to be able to. Well, let's put it off then. That's what I'm saying. If you guys want to put it off to you have the four, the five of you, yeah, we can do that. She because she can be chair, he can be vice chair. Vice okay. chair, yeah. You, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll do it at the next meeting? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Oh, I need you to speak into the mic. A point of clarification. The board does have the ability to elect any board member <laughs> as chair or vice chair, but... Uh, the board can also make the decision to table this item until the next meeting. Okay. To, um, until a time where you'll have all the board members present to oh. be able to make this decision as a complete board. Uh, so okay. if that's the case, then right now there would need to be a motion to table this item uh, or the selection of the board positions until the next zoning board meeting. Okay. Okay. Do I pass the gavel? No, no. Okay, no. okay. You just ask for somebody to... A motion. Who will make the motion? I'll second it. Oh, well, nobody motioned it. You okay. made the motion. Well, I motion it to uh, table it until next meeting. I second it. And I third. Okay, so then the, the motion is to table this item until the next Correct. meeting. Correct. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you. You were about to say something? CZ, you'll be you'll be running the meeting tonight okay. as, as the chair uh, because you were the vice chair uh, of previous. Okay. Thank you. So, um, roll call. Roll call. Um, Ms. Clone? Here. Yes. Ms. Walker? Yes. Ms. Cunningham. Yes. Okay. Motion passes. Uh, next is the approval of the previous minutes. And I will read item number and title 5.1. No, no. No, no, no. No. We have to mo somebody needs to motion for the approval of the minutes. Who would like to motion the approval of minutes? To approve the previous minutes? A motion. We weren't here. Can it's we okay. still do that? Yeah. Okay. Board, okay. Board, Madam Chair, I, I, we understand the board members weren't here. We also understand that I believe that with the exception of the chair, the, the entirety of the board will be new. And so no one will be here, but the, the minutes from the last meeting still need to be preserved. The minutes can be uh, you, you may ask questions of the clerk regarding the minutes. The minutes can be uh, listened to uh, because they're on record. Um, you may 
watch the meeting, uh, to verify the minutes, but but the minutes do need to be um, preserved. So you, you, you may vote on it. Okay, so make a motion. If there's a motion, or there's a, a discussion. Is there, there a discussion? Or should we? Do you mind telling us a little bit about what happened the last meeting? Then maybe we could it's vote on it. It was the 5th of January, our last meeting. Yeah, that's Madam Chair, if you would like, I, I, could, I could summarize. Just, yes, a summary, a quick summary. Sure, sure. So, uh, This was the meeting uh, that was on January 5th mm -hmm. uh, of 2023. Um, there was an approval of minutes, and then there were um, uh, several applications um, that were there. Uh, they all pertain to an area known as the Southwest 30th Avenue. So it's Southwest 30th Avenue between Allendale Beach Boulevard and Pembroke uh, Road. And what, what there was is multiple applications. One was a, a land use plan amendment. Uh, there was a second one that created a new zoning district, which is called the Mixed Use Entertainment District. So that allowed uh, hotels, restaurants, residential in that area now. And then there was the rezoning of the area from industrial or M1 and a piece on Hallandale Beach Boulevard, which was CY, and we zoned all of that to this new mixed use entertainment district. Uh, subsequent, after after this board recommended approval of those items, they went on to the uh, town commission and were adopted. So uh, <coughs> it, it, was, it was mainly a procedural. Uh, the the board voted unanimously at that meeting, and then the the ordinance, the land use plan amendment, and the rezoning were all uh, approved unanimously by the town commission. Okay. 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 So, it. I wish he had the presentation. It's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's a great project. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. approved and everything already. I guess we just have to to vote. Yeah. To go with it. Okay. So, is there a motion? Yes. Motion. I'll make that motion to approve. I second it. I third. Ms. Colon? Yes, I. Ms. Ms. Walker? Aye. Ms. Cunningham? Aye. Motion approved. And I asked the clerk to call the roll call. I already did. She did. She did. Okay. Okay, so um, any additions, deletions, withdrawals? What no. was the question? Are there any additions, deletions, withdrawals? If if no one answers, then I proceed no. to. Okay, so we're going to proceed to number seven, the applications, public hearings. Seven point one file number two two R Z zero two, the town of Pembroke Park. And the request is the code amendment to ban marijuana dispensaries. 007.10 PZB Marijuana Dispensary Memo, memo 0526-2023. Those are just the numbers of okay. the other. Yeah. Okay. So ahead. how did you want to, did you want to go and talk about all of them first, like how you use it? Well, yeah, I'll go, I'll go ahead and just give a, a brief description okay. and then we'll take a run at a time. So t tonight, uh, in front of you, we have uh, only Three ordinance amendments. Uh, these so these three changes are to the zoning code of this board, the Planning and Zoning Board, and each of them covers a different topic. So we'll we'll take them one at a time. If you have any questions, uh, feel free uh, to ask. Um, and, and then what we're looking for after each one. Uh, CC will open the public hearing to see if any, uh, anyone from the public would like to speak. Once that is closed, then it's up to the board for discussion and a vote. But your vote is just a recommendation to, to the town commission. Um, and th 
but then they'll still make up their mind whether or not they would like to pursue. No, because he's going to. Um, so, the, so the first one is the proposed uh, text amendment uh, to prohibit marijuana dispensaries. Uh, currently, there is one operating in the in the town. Uh, there is a, there is a second application uh, pending at, in the building department for a, a second dispensary. And it was uh, a discussion of most of the town staff to go ahead and approach the <clears throat> town commission with their concerns about uh, the possibility of having too many. So, uh, yeah. well. <laughs> and, and I think that was a concern and the concern of, of any kind of detrimental effects that it could have to the town having so many of those. So, um, what will occur now? So, let me go ahead and keep going with the history first. So, th these concerns were brought to the town commission, and the town commission uh, passed a resolution at one of their meetings, stating that they are zoning in progress. So, th that was a call to to the state or to to all business operators. Hey, the town is changing their code, considering changing their code. Uh, and they, they, we would like to go ahead and outright ban dis, uh, dispensaries. Now, we cannot ban the one that is in operation, and we also cannot ban the one that has an application pending. Um, there, there's rules and requirements that, that the town is required to, to follow to, to not prohibit ones that are already existing. They will fall under a section of the code, which is also a part of the zoning code, which is called non-conforming use. So essentially, they're legal. They're allowed to remain. They can stay in business. And it, however, if they close for 90 days or longer, then the next tenant who comes into that space will not be able to operate a marijuana dispensary. They would be able to. Uh, they would be allowed to operate any other business that would be allowed in the B1 zoning district. And, and that those uses are, are very liberal. That's, that's all the other uses that are allowed along uh, Helen Damage Boulevard. So um, this, the, this ordinance essentially um, goes in uh, one, one additional item. There, there is a state law that also regulates marijuana dispensaries, which kind of tied the town's hands, and this is one of the reasons where we are uh, doing the, the total prohibition, was uh, by state law, you are required to treat marijuana dispensaries the same as you would a pharmacy, like a Walgreens, a Rite Aid, a, uh, CBS. So uh, if you would, if the town wanted to place a distance separation requirement, say a thousand feet or half mile or anything like that, that where, where they would have to be that far apart to so that they're not all located in one dense area, then uh, you would also have to do that to, to the pharmacies. So it, it uh, however, the state also says towns, cities and towns can go ahead and just outright not allow them at, you know, at this time. And that's the way it's, the state works. So it, it was recommended uh, by the staff and recommended by the town commission to go ahead and proceed with the, the outright prohibition. So the ordinance in front of you today, so there's uh, first the uh, memorandum, which kind of essentially describes what I just uh, stated. And then what we do do is, is go in, we modify uh, section 2894 of the code. We uh, modify section 28-187 uh, of the code. And then we uh, essentially eliminate uh, section 28-187.3, oh, which is all the definitions. Uh, concerning marijuana dispensaries. So now that there's an outright ban, that essentially that section is not necessary. And that is, that is pretty much it. Oh, I think there is one, uh, one last, oh no, it's in the same section. Uh, uh, section 28-187.
I don't have that. They printed it. Oh, okay. Mayor Medical Marijuana Dispensary. Essentially, that uh, if, if there's any questions, that that is uh, the process that uh, you, you see here in terms of the straight through and underlined. The underlined would be the new text that would go into the code. The straight through is what's there now and will be eliminated uh, if and when the town commission approves the ordinance. So the the one that is in applic yes yes I would like to open up the floor for public's comments. Are there any public comments? Okay, I would like to close public comments. Do you guys have anything to say? Oh, how exclusive? Nope. There you go. Oh, I'm sorry. I heard you well. Bob. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm just loud. <laughs> yeah. You could close it. <laughs> you closed it. Yeah. So yes. you have the close. Yes. Okay. So I go ahead. Does she have a question? Okay. Did you want to continue on, or did you want her to make the motion? Yeah. So uh, if if there are no questions from any of the the board members? Oh, you do. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. I would like to um, know the application that's open. Just do we know what area it's going to be in? I I do not. Okay. That was uh, building with no. It's it's in the it's okay. in the, an application is pending at the building. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you said there's one present now. Yes. Where is that? True Leave, and it's just Cureleaf. down by the railroad tracks. Cure Leave. Cure Leave. Cure Leave. I know it was a leaf something. Yeah. <laughs> so there's one. It's uh, down by the uh, railroad tracks, actually on the Where on the east side of the railroad. Harlots, right in that area. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let me see if I understood this. So there's one there. There's one application pending. The town commissioners vote for. They 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 voted for. Uh, uh, just a, an announcement to to go ahead and stop any new applications from coming in. I think there was concerns that the second application was going to trigger multiple applications coming into the town, and that all all of the dispensaries, however many have licenses, would all be locating in the town and and not being dispersed either along Hallandale Beach Boulevard or or elsewhere. In um, you know Miami Dade County and, and Broward County, because it's we have yeah, we have a like two and a half yeah. mile in our town. Right. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, we don't so need so many. Yeah, Five that's... and two and a half miles. Yes. It's, it's a lot. So so the town the, the town made a a declaration within that resolution. Mm -hmm. Okay, no no more uh, applications. On, until we can come up with this new ordinance, which you see in front of you today. Okay. Yeah, there's there's no, there's unless there's no, uh, unless there are other dis come questions. No. So, I I open to to approve. Yeah, you were looking for a motion yes. from from the board members. A motion. A motion in yeah. a second. I'm a, I'm looking to entertain a motion. I'm entertaining a motion. Okay. I put in the motion to approve that. Well, this is, um, and just to make sure, uh, this as a recommending body, the motion is to recommend to to forward this uh, application to the commission with a recommendation of approval. Correct. Okay. Is there a second? I second it. Thank you. Third. Um, Miss Clum. I, yes. Ms. Walker? Yes. Ms. Cunningham? Yes. Okay, motion approved. Great. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So we go to the second ordinance, 7.2, file number 22RZ03, Town of Pembroke Park, requesting the code amendment relating B1 mixed use residential. 
Yeah, it's okay. Again, uh, for the record, or I don't know if I, I mentioned it the first time, so uh, my name is Mike Vondermulen. I am your consultant town planner. Um, I work for a company called Keith. Uh, I have a group of... I'm sorry? What company? A Keith. Okay. It's, uh, we're just called Keith. It's, it was also, we do business as uh, Keith and Associates. I think it's our official, our official name. Our corporate headquarters is in Pompano. Uh, we have offices in Fort Lauderdale, uh, uh, Blue Lagoon down in Miami, West Palm Beach, uh, Orlando, and Port St. Lucie. Uh, we uh, were a multidisciplinary firm. We do surveying, landscape architecture, civil engineering, and urban planning. Under I, I am the vice president of the uh, planning department for the for the uh, company, and I have uh, nine other planners who work for me. Uh, we do private sector work and public sector work uh, as well, and um, uh, we're honored to be working with the town. And so if you ever have any questions, and I'll, I'll provide you with my business card so you can contact me with any questions that you may have, you know, um, either before or after in, any meeting that we have. Uh, the uh, this, this second item is going to head in amending the B1 uh, zoning district. Most of the B1 zoning district is located along Hallandale Beach Boulevard. There are little bits in the north and the south, way way on the on the west side. There's a there's a piece I think at uh, 56 and County Line, and then there's a couple other uh, smaller pieces uh, north of Hallandale Beach Boulevard. And uh, so this is a um, uh, an amendment. There is already a a mixed use component in the in the town's code. I think uh, maybe one uh, developer had taken advantage of it. What we're trying to do now is, is encourage more redevelopment and um, to allow for this mixed use. So mixed, when we say mixed use, we're, we're saying, okay, we're gonna mix the commercial and residential together. Typically that is, you know, ground floor, uh, retail, restaurants, um, office space, and then above it, you know, you typically have the apartments. Um, in this particular instance, you, so you can also have, just have freestanding uh, residential with, uh, without any uh, commercial component. And then again, um, you could just have commercial, and that's 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 allowed too. You're not you're not forced by any means to to do this but what we're trying to do is is encourage more redevelopment um all, you know in in the town uh, uh to spur on uh, both ho additional housing and, as well as affordable housing and that this is what these new code amendments try to do so it, it, um, I, i'm not going to go into all the <clears throat> technical stuff that's that's attached with all the strike through and underlines, but I just want to go through this synopsis that's that's in the staff report. So uh, if a property is 10 acres or less, uh, you would be able to have the freestanding resident residential building or the mixed use building. Um, the, um, there's an increase in the permitted density. Uh, thus it, it creates a, an allowance for aff affordable housing. So if a developer is willing to deed restrict their property for 30 years and meet the Broward County requirements for affordable he uh, affordable housing, then you know, you'd have this uh, additional uh, density that uh, can be uh, awarded during the site plan approval process and during what we call the, the special exception process. Uh, we What we've also done here is uh, reduce the setbacks in the in this uh, in these regulations they were kind of onerous they were they were making the the sites kind of compact and tight and the way we've written it now is to encourage that the buildings get close to the road the parking is is located in the rear or within structured parking and so what we're trying to do is is activate the street with with pedestrians and, and uh, you know, not try to make it look uh, like a sea of parking uh, uh, as you as you go down the street. I was at first, I was like, 
Why would you want to put the building near the road? Yeah, okay. so you know, but I understand now. Yeah, and and, and, and when uh, also when you get to some of these when you get to some of these densities, and and hopefully we'll have improvements in our mass transit. A lot of these people will all of a sudden not need vehicles. They could either bike to work. They could, you know, if as long as they're not on Allendale Beach Boulevard, they could they could Uber to work or they could take mass transit. Say you're going down to Gulf, Gulf Street Park or you're going to to a hospital or uh, so you you have those options available to you and and you you're not forced to have a car. Uh, and that's that's what we're trying to to encourage both on Southwest Thirtieth Avenue in the mix, the new mixed use district and then and then here as well. Uh, we reduced the pervious requirements. The, there was a there was an additional pervious requirement for just the mixed use, and what we've done is, is kind of taken that out and reduced it so that we could encourage again the more structured parking, um, and, and the building moved moved uh, forward uh, onto closer to the street. Um, and we there's a minimum uh, ground use activation. Again, this this is uh, again the encouragement to to activate the street. So there's a certain percentage of the front of the building that that needs to be active. And active meaning uh, retail, restaurants, offices, whether it's doctors' offices, it could be the lobby, uh, uh, it could be either a uh, a gym open to the public or just the private gym. Of, uh, of the of the building itself, so those are the kinds of things that we're trying to see. So so that you see people along the street, and so as as additional developments occur, then they start to play off each other and they can take advantage of each other, and you start to have this uh, live work and and uh, play uh, type situation. Once once you get the 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 right number of, you know the right number of developments it starts out slow but then as it is it uh, you know keeps moving forward we hope to, to encourage that kind of goal let's see there there's also a adjustments on the uh, the bedroom sizes and some clarification to make sure that um, the bedroom sizes match up with uh, some of the Broward County code requirements and so that uh, you'll see that in there and then um, we we also it, and it's a, a presentation a little bit further towards the end we recognize the in the code we recognize the Broward County affordable housing policies and what that does is it, it allows us to use those uh, to the town and take advantage of those those uh, density bonuses that are afforded to us by Broward County. And that, that concludes my presentation. So I'd like to open comments to the public for comments. Okay, I can close for comments. And then I shall ask for a motion to approve item Ooh, seven. I have, I have questions. Okay. Um, I still don't get the mixed-use resident. Is it apartments plus businesses, both people living and business at the same time? Or? Yeah, yeah. So in in the B one district, which is mainly the the properties along Hallandale Beach Boulevard in the town, if you you can operate just like you are right now, you can uh, op operate a business. You know, either either it's an office or a doctor's office or or a restaurant or or retail space, clothing stores, all that. That there's there's no change. There's no change to any of that. That's all allowed. But what this does is, uh, if you have um, um, some of the some of the vacant properties or that nursery down the street, you know, this is this is to encourage the the redevelopment. Of, of sites that are kind of more underutilized and you can say hey you have the option you can 
you can build you can build a, a commercial building you can build an office building it's, it's, you can still do all that however if you want to have residential and, and the town is would like to see additional residential then uh, you can you can have that on the property as well for the longest time almost throughout Broward County residential wasn't allowed in B1 and it's it's just been over the 10 last 10 years or so where they've been starting to encourage this more so as you see in some of the more urban centers whether whether it's um, you know downtown you know, downtown area in Hallandale Beach or the downtown area in Hollywood or the downtown area in, in Fort Lauderdale you, you have those ground floor you get the restaurants and stuff and then everybody lives on top I see a lot of it in Miami too. yeah yeah <laughs> and actually if you want to <clears throat> quickly take a look at downtown Hollywood where the Publix the new Publix mm -hmm. it was it's about what eight years now upstairs is the living and downstairs is like UPS um, Publix um, they used to have a Starbucks but they converted it into like a some kind of resident cap. actually lives yeah, on the top. To, on the um, top. Yeah. Take a ride downtown top. Hollywood, uh, the circle. I know the new Publix. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly. Resident, but it's not, obviously it's not as big. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, was, yeah, yeah there's residences on top. Mm -hmm. It's called yeah. Cycro or Cicro. Cicro, C and then uh, right across wow. the street is also. Uh, yeah. Radius. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Radius. Yeah. Yep. That's. So what we're trying to do is just encourage that along Hallandale Beach Boulevard, and then there's, like I said, there's other pockets. There's a, there is a, a piece of property that is is vacant right now, right at uh, County Line, and and 56, which, um, I think, a lot of people have looked at it for convenience stores and gas stations and stuff like that, and and nobody has ever just moved forward. Mm -hmm. And so there, there has been a lot of interest uh, in the in the business and development community to actually try to encourage a mixed use project there, without you know going through you know major major changes that require state approval. So this is the type of co changes that we're allowing to to encourage those those kind of developments. Hmm. Any more questions? I don't know if I would feel good living on top of a business. <laughs> it's actually the new and the old way because if you go if you go to New York or yeah, any of the other cities, I was I mean, just thinking that. it's been that uh, my... it's it's been that way for yeah, forever. So yeah, but that's it, what differ. I mean, New York from Florida or certain right. states where you saw houses and. Yes, Stuff like that. But yeah, the young people. But I you know. No. Yeah, yeah, what's old is new again. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so how does the commission do they vote on this one? Yeah, so uh, we had a workshop with them last week, I believe. Yes, so we actually workshop these, and we let them know that they were coming to the the planning and zoning board, and um, they actually. Uh, requested a few changes we we actually were we had a, a zero degree setback on the on Allendale Beach Boulevard and they were really concerned that that was way too close so we pushed it back we pushed it back five feet there was a lot of interest by uh, Commissioner Morissette about uh, awnings and and colonnades and providing shade for these pedestrians um, so he he he, he is uh, very much interested in the in the in the pedestrian activation and, and and ensuring that we have bike parking as well. Yeah, because I don't is kind of crowded. I mean, yeah. it's kind yeah. of it's back to back sardines. Yeah, you know, yeah. even just just a few minutes ago. So just to um, any any projects. I'm sorry, what's your name again? Paulette. Paulette. Any projects that come, come to us first, and then they go to the commission, but usually they'll have staff meetings before. That, that's correct. So this board, uh, what one of your other duties other than um, 
changing changing the uh, the actual text and the code is, is to hear uh, various different applications for development and redevelopment in the city and that would include rezonings and subdivisions and uh, land use plan amendments um, special exceptions for for uses that you know need extra review and approval and then the the last and the biggest one is is the site plan approval so if anybody comes in uh, with a development uh, you know major development in the city uh, there's a in-house staff that reviews it for all the various dis different disciplines uh, police fire engineering landscape planning and we that staff ensures that it meets all the minimum code requirements before it's even presented to you all and then um, then you, this board will review it and make recommendations to the town whether or not uh, you you believe that 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 kind of development is is right for the town. So, you know this 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 ordinance is is the first step, and then as the developments come in, then you can you can also say hey okay, and, you know this is this is this is the kind of investments we want to see in the town. Or this is not the kind of investments that you want to see in the town, and then and then we would take that feedback and we would come and represent to you again. It's very similar to what happened with the marijuana dispensaries. It was a good idea, you know, to, to allow the businesses to come in, but all of a sudden it looked like uh, we were the only ones letting them in, and and you know. Put your hands up yeah. and say stop. Mm -hmm. So if we want to give everybody the benefit of the doubt first, exactly. and then uh, you know, we can always uh, come back later and modify it. Okay. Entertain a motion? <laughs> yes, I would like to entertain a motion to, to approve item number 7.2 code amendment relating to B1 mixed use residential. A so recommendation to the town commission. And, it's, and recommendation to the town commission for approval. For approval. Or just a, just a a recommendation. It's the board's prerogative of whether they want to refer this item to the commission with an approval or a denial. Okay. Okay. Approval. Motion. Yes. Motion to approve. Motion to recommend approval. Motion to recommend approval. Yes. I, s I second it. I third. Ms. Walker? Yes, I said I second it. Okay. Well, she's doing roll call. I'm doing roll, yeah. Oh, you can roll call? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Each yes. No, go ahead and say yes. Yes. Okay. Ms. Cunningham? Yes. Ms. Cologne? Yes. Okay. See, you guys mix me up because normally Marlon does the roll call. I'm used to hearing Marlon's voice, so you guys mess me up. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Okay. So we proceed to 7.3, the ordinance amendment 23RZ01, the town of Pembroke Park, requesting code amendment to allow luminant open signs. Yes, <laughs> uh, Madam Chair, members of the Planning and Zoning Board, again, my name is Mike Vonermulen with Keith. Um, this is a, a this is probably the easiest and simplest uh, zoning uh, zoning code change here. It is uh, essentially what it's doing is allowing a, an illuminated open sign in the window or door. And it's going to be two square feet, so it's probably going to be about one foot by two foot. You didn't, your typical open sign that you can turn off and on. Uh, what what we did not want to do is is allow because the code already prohibits uh, animation, you know, anything that kind of moves or anything like that. So it, it can't say O then P and then E and then N. It just has to say open. And and what. The, the result of, and the reason why this is coming to you is that uh, a lot of the businesses along Hallandale Beach Boulevard uh, had come to the town commission saying they, they had concerns. A lot of them have tinted glass on, on their businesses. 
And so when it gets uh, dark, especially in the winter, the, you couldn't tell whether these businesses were open or not. So uh, they they came to the town. They, they had the, they wanted their concerns addressed, and so we were we were charged with the task of going ahead and setting up this ordinance. So hopefully uh, you would, you would think the, this is a good idea and and recommend the same. Nothing big and crazy, right? No, yeah, two foot, two, two yeah, two feet. two square feet. Two so square. It, it could be you know one foot by two, two feet feet. this way or right. or one foot tall and two feet this way or you know any any number of two square feet and the two square feet is is also a very similar number to what is allowed either on the door or the window in terms of uh, your hours of operation mm -hmm. uh, so we, we thought that was a, a an appropriate size and I think most of the typical open signs that you that you can purchase are are in that range. Well, I, a few people that I've just been running into sporadically, I mean it wasn't planned or nothing. They they were actually just this week they were actually talking about this. Yes. They're like how do I get my signs? I need my signs. And the code won't let us, and we got to get a permit. So this is going to make the town's business local mm, so happy. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'd like to open the floor for any public comments. Okay, I'd like to close the floor. You should ask us first before you close. Let's just, oh, I'm we want public. to make a comment. Oh, it's just for the, the public. public. Just the yeah. public. Oh, okay. First. Yeah. Oh. Then it's discussion. Then it's discussion, and then you can, you can Oh, speak. because I thought you were closing. No, no. It's only for the public. So now I open for discussion. Okay, so before, you're saying the businesses didn't have signs? Well, they, they weren't allowed. They had to go get a permit. Correct. Yeah, correct. So, yeah. So we the, the town has a sign code. So you're, you're, you're allowed to have signs. Uh, mm -hmm. You're you're allowed to have, you know, your your hours of operation, you know, like with little lettering and things like that, uh, but you're you you are not you're you couldn't have an open sign. So you could have the name of your business, but and as we were saying, you know, it was we get late at, uh, you know, we get dark early. These businesses would be open, and you, you know, as you're, you see all the cars going by on Hallandale Beach Boulevard, nobody's pulling in. So they're they're hoping to they have nothing you know, visible. To see the see an open sign and say, oh, okay, oh, they're open, okay, and I'm I'm going, I'm leaving work, and I'm going to go home. I'll oh, check them out, and then go you know, on my way home. So For a little time. Yeah. it was it was really to help help these businesses. Don't ride crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's a new year, so we're renewing, right? Yes, yes. So as long as our people are happy, that's that's what matters. Yes, yeah. yep. Yeah. So whatever they recommend, it's it's visible and it's the right size, nothing too overpowered. C correct. So this is this is eleven inches. So when you're you're looking at you. Know, yeah. Something about that size, maybe just a touch bigger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And visible and, and readable. Yeah, and it, yeah. It's it, it's it's tasteful. It's it's not mm -hmm. overburdensome, and you're still able to see it from from Hallandale Beach Boulevard. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. So when after this goes to the the, the commission then it will be in effect because I see some of these people and I would like to say to them, I have good news yes. for you. <laughs> and they're going to say when, so an approximate well, like, wait, wait. few months. <laughs> it's a few months because like six uh, months? The, town, uh, the, the town commission you know, has a summer break. So okay. I believe, you, and we have to have two readings. Right, so probably town like commission. six months. It would be about you know, October, November at the latest. I would leave it like that for now, not to tell them anything. Yeah, just say it's... You it's, told me three. It, yeah, that's <laughs> exactly. true. That's exactly. True. I don't want to get you all in trouble. Yes. <laughs> You're right. So I'll just say it's in the, the process. It's, it's in process, yeah. Process yes. is process. Okay. Yeah. Call Marlon. 
Yeah, oh. call Marlon. <laughs> yeah. I blame everything on Marlon. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to ask if there's a motion to approve item 7.3 code amendment allowing to illuminate open signs. I approve. Motion. Motion. Second. I made that motion. No, she made that. And I third. Okay. Motion. Miss Cunningham? Yes. Miss Cologne? Yes. Miss Walker? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. Okay. So next, um, 8.1. The Broward County Comprehensive Plan Policies Concerning Affordable Housing. Yes, uh, uh, Madam Chair, this is uh, this this item as well as the next item um, uh, deal with affordable housing. One one is uh, the way Broward County handles it, and then another another one is the new law that the state of Florida has uh, just passed. What's that? And uh, so uh, I'm going to go through the first one, and then the town attorney, uh, Mr. Hernandez, is going to handle the the second one since he was the the author of the memo, and, and it's <laughs> it was really good. I've uh, I've been working with different cities and and towns and developers on how this is being interpreted, and and he has done a very good job of explaining this uh, close to 100 page. Uh, law that that came down from the state of Florida, uh, but the first one, this is uh, what the what the Broward County has been doing for uh, almost almost two years. Uh, it also had a you know the the state one has a called the Live Local Act, and the, this Broward County one used to be called the Geller Amendment, kind of named after uh, former Senator uh, Geller. Uh, who uh, spearheaded the this this affordable housing policies in Broward County that you can apply, uh, you know, throughout with within every city and town uh, in, in Broward County. So everyone, everybody in Broward County can take advantage of of this, and um, it, it's it's very nice. So what I've what I've tried to do is provide you some information first. You know, try to give you some numbers on what really affordable housing is. So, you can see on on the first page, these are the maximum rents that can be charged uh, for for affordable housing. There's there's three levels of affordable housing. There is very low, low, and then um, they call it moderate, or we call it workforce, and. Uh, on page one, those are those are the rents. Those are the maximum rents that can be charged, and that's based on uh, the bedroom size and the uh, and the type of and what the type of you know low, uh, moderate, or very low. What this does is this this is this comes out every couple of years through Broward County. Anybody who deed restricts their property and has rental units. They're they're required to abide by by those by these numbers. These would be the maximum rents that they could charge. I have a question. Sure. When you're saying on the income, um, when they when a person applies for this, are they determining how many people are <coughs> in? Say that it's an efficiency. How many people are you're allowing to be in these different uh, rooms? Mm, you could say. No, <laughs> I think so there's a person there's, can rent an efficiency, and three and four people can live. I th I think there are other there are other rules. Yeah. Um, I think there those are either governed governed by and the building code is it? yeah it's a, it's the building code. Yeah, I'm sorry, I know it's not in the zoning code. It, it, some some do have it, but uh, there there are building codes that that um, limit the number of persons with within a. A particular household. They limit the and I can get you that information. I'll, br I'll bring that to the next meeting. That was just curious. So yeah. Because you know you have they one have. person with one bedroom and they have four no, or five I'm people. the next meeting. Bedroom. Oh sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, 
on the second page, these are the uh, the uh, income requirements. Um, and again, these are the, the the maximum income limits, and that's this is actually based on the number of households. So if you if you were selling your units, then you would um, you would be using these numbers as a guide uh, for when they're issuing the mortgages and when and when they're purchasing the property. And again, this is monitored over over a thirty year period. To receive the benefits so so here are the benefits so uh, if a developer comes in and is going to go ahead and deed restrict their property in some way shape or form there's this formula here so um, if if you have moderate if you uh, deed restrict one moderate one of your units to moderate income you're allowed to have six other units uh, in your property, so it's 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 a it's a it's a nice density bonus. Um, the advantage that comes to the town is not so much in the residential areas. This is really shouldn't affect these, but again, it goes back to these mixed use developments that we're talking about, uh, Hallandale Beach Boulevard and and Southwith Thirtieth, where. Um, the town only has a certain number of what we call flex units, yeah. and uh, we're we're down to a hundred. We have gone back to Broward County to ask for just over five hundred more, uh, but we can leverage those five hundred <clears throat> and either multiply them times six, times nine, or times nineteen, depending on uh, the types of developments that occur. So it's it's um, it's something that uh, you know we we strongly recommend it that the town take advantage of, uh, and it's it's available. The and so those those nineteen or nine or six units do not come out of your pool. They do not come out of that pool of five hundred. They're they're over and above, which is which is awesome. Which which should help the town in terms of. Uh, anyone interested in in redeveloping certain properties so where would they build these low income houses where would they do where where would they be located uh they they could be located on any property and what this what this code with these policies do is encourage the mix so this that low income or very low income or moderate income unit is intermixed with all of those other market rate ones, so it's not it's not a standalone affordable housing project, you know it, it you know it, it it's intended to to mix the affordable with the market rate so that everybody lives together, mm -hmm. you know enjoys the same uh, you know amenities that that are in the development. <clears throat> And if you didn't know already, I like talking with my hands. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. That's what you expect. You're a builder, right? <laughs> <laughs> and again, there's there's no motions required for this. This is not a public hearing. This was just for your information because okay. I think I think within the next year you're going to probably see a project come in okay. um, that'll be taking advantage of this. So. Uh, and my taxes would be higher. <laughs> <laughs> they never seem to go down, do they? Mm -mm. Yeah, my property taxes would be higher as we the city. And that's so the 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 property if you have good development though valued. It would kind of, you know, even itself out. We in Florida. Yeah. We don't have to approve. No, 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 it's okay. No. Try to be optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and Marlon is correct. It's like uh, when, when when there's there's new development, newer developments, and and they, and you have uh, places that you can walk to, and or or you know 
there's improvements with these additional people that come and they have a certain expectation too and they're also paying taxes so you know you yes you may be paying some additional taxes but the your property values will be going yeah. because that's what because the area is going to be much more desirable to be living yeah value will go and up. The, the town really needs an upgrade as much i mean it has no, it's, it's the, 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 come a long way. But. I'll, t I'll tell you, the town is doing an excellent yeah. job. They, your your employment base with with the uh, things that are going on at Seneca, yeah. the new commercial construction with the with the Wawa and right. the, and the hospital and the, and the hotel, those are those are fantastic, and those those are really going to serve the town well. Yeah, I'm sure. So I can I open. Oh yeah, no, no need nope. to open the public okay. hearing. Uh, just questions, or we could just go on to the next item. Next to, item. Whenever you're comfortable. Yep. Next item. Yep. Okay. Uh, the next item is eight point two, the Florida Live Local Act. Yeah. Good evening, uh, Madam Chair and Board Members. So. Uh, Michael was kind enough earlier by introducing himself to remind me that I did not introduce myself. We just went straight into business <laughs> this evening. It got, it, it, we started moving very quickly earlier on. So my name is Paul Hernandez. I am an attorney at Gorin Sheriff Duty in Ezreal. We function, at, our firm functions as the interim town attorney, uh, town attorney's office for uh, this town. Uh, I believe that the board members are familiar with my colleague, who, who is the interim town attorney, mm -hmm. uh, Jacob Horowitz, yeah. uh, from from their experience on, on other boards uh, w within the town. So I have the pleasure of working with Jacob every day. Uh, and I, we also have collectively the, the, the pleasure of representing the town. Uh, I want to speak to you today, and, and, and thank you to Michael for, for bringing this matter up. It, 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 follows the same discussion it lives within the same realm of the affordable housing uh issues that michael had alluded to now to provide the board with some context uh the state of florida for for a long time different municipalities have been working to address uh, the need for affordable housing, the rising need for affordable housing uh, within the state. And it seems that to one extent or the other, uh, most if not all cities in Florida have had, either have had this discussion or have implemented policies to promote affordable housing. Uh, but the state uh, this session uh, came in and said, you know what, uh, this is not enough and the state's going to provide a solution to affordable housing and they pr provided this uh, they drafted this live local act which is now a law in the state of florida to address the affordable housing issues in uh the state now this is statewide it applies from monroe county all the way to leon so what what this does is and one of the the, the most significant uh, changes uh, to this uh, to, to existing zoning municipal zoning regulations are that as, as you are aware we have uh, in, in the town of Pembroke Park we have our zoning designations where some areas are designated commercial and that's where you have your shopping centers some are mixed use as we discussed today some are industrial and that's where we have you know these industrial uses well the the state said you know what there's not a lot of land to go around these days but there's a lot of demand for housing so maybe we should start looking at housing in these areas that aren't zoned for housing so the effect of it is that through this new law we can now see applications for mixed use developments like the ones that we discussed before coming into not just B1, but into our industrial zoning designations and our commercial zoning designations. So you'll have a, a commercial property, and if you have an applicant that uh, meets the, the requirements that are outlined by the law, the town uh, 
will have to consider and in certain cases approve administratively uh, the development of mixed use residential buildings in areas that are industrial and commercial presently. Uh, so, and I, and I mentioned approve administratively and it's significant because under certain requirements, the town now will not have the discretion or the town, the town commission will not have the discretion to decide these matters. They, the state has taken that away, so it won't come be, these items that have always come before uh, this board and then have subsequently been recommended to the town commission will now be approved by the by town staff administratively. There, there is no legislative process or decision making for certain applications uh, pursuant to this live local law. Uh, so there are the the live local law provides uh, the municipalities in some cases the discretion to consider allowing mixed use residential uh, on within industrial and commercial uh, zoned properties and that is if the if if you're presenting a mixed use of a developers presenting a mixed use uh, within a property that's whose underlying zoning designation is industrial or commercial but the mixed use really includes just 10% affordable housing units 10% or less then the town has the discretion to decide, you know, maybe we don't have to consider this as an allowable use. However, if that development comes in, as and and the developer is proffering forty percent or more of the units in that proposed development to be affordable housing, and commits to the town that those units will remain affordable for the next thirty years. Well, in the statute, the new law says that the state no longer has the discretion to, to decide whether or not that's going to be an allowable use within commercial or industrial. The state must allow that use. Whether the, whether the development ultimately gets approved is a different story. There's, there's certain reviews that are still preserved. Uh, but the actual use and that, that, that initial green light to go ahead uh, without seeking what traditionally would have been a, a zoning change, um, that's given to the developers should they meet this criteria. The act, the act also says that for these types of use, these types of developments, the municipality may not restrict the density of a proposed affordable housing development. Uh, below the highest allowed density on any land within the municipality, so they could. So for de as far as density goes, if it meets the criteria outlined, if the development meets the criteria outlined by the act, then they could uh, uh, avail themselves. That, de that development could avail itself of the highest allowable density anywhere in the town, and and there's similar uh, requirements for height of the proposed building as well. Uh, so I'll, I'll read it to you. The, it says, further municipalities may not restrict the height of a proposed affordable housing development authorized by this act to less than the higher of either a municipality's maximum allowable height for a commercial or residential development located in the municipality within a one mile radius of the proposed development or three stories. Which, so, so, it's either three stories, or if the if if the if the development if the town allows a higher higher than three stories, then they could build higher. They could build up to the highest height available presently anywhere in the town. And what is the highest? The highest would be one hundred. One hundred feet. Feet. So, yeah. how many stories? Yeah. <laughs> approximately, how many stories? approximately ten, ten stories. Ten stories. Do you think yeah. we can accommodate that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd like to ha uh, just cover a couple more. Uh, there's also requirements that the town uh, provide an inventory of publicly owned vacant land. Now, the the requirement for municipalities to provide th this inventory has existed. Uh, but but this 
sets a deadline now of October 20, October 1st, 2023 uh, for the town to make this available publicly, uh, post it, put it on its website, etc. for the public and developers to see. Uh, so they'll the town will have to conduct an assessment of all the publicly owned uh, vacant lands within the town's jurisdiction and post that and make that information public in the hopes that someone will take advantage of this uh, property and develop more affordable housing. The law also provides um, three uh, new tax exemptions, one for land owned by a not-for-profit or additional tax exemptions, uh, exemptions for portions of properties used for a charitable, charitable purpose and there is an optional county and municipal affordable housing exemption that is actually if you know if you have a municipality that owns one of these affordable housing uh, buildings or certain exemptions on the taxes that the act provides the act also provides a preemption on rent control sometimes there's there's several cities that uh, have rent control ordinances within their code uh, to restrict uh, a landlord's ab uh, ability to raise rent from one year to the next, uh, in in many instances, uh, on their tenants. Well, if 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 a municipality in Florida had that, uh, this law uh, prohibits it and it, in effect erases that that ordinance. So we don't have that though. No. 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 There's also, um, just and just for the board's information, Rent. there's also a bill that was approved called um, HB 1417 that ha was approved by the legislature. It has not yet been signed into law. But that bill, if you have, it, it prohibits, it essentially prohibits local governments from having, uh, from making any regulatory policy that affects uh, the, the landlord-tenant relationship. So there's certain places that have a tenant. I think Broward County has a tenant's bill of rights. That tenant's bill of rights will, in effect, uh, cease to exist once this is signed into law. In other words, the owner can do whatever they want. Okay, so so there's pros and cons to this act. Is that, is I'm just reading the facts. <laughs> I'm just telling you the facts. That's for. <laughs> That's yeah. for the board to decide. <laughs> we we won't know if they're okay. good or bad until somebody uses them. <laughs> but 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 there's certainly I mean you know I we, we we know here and when we all know the the great lengths that municipal governments take to draft our ordinances, our local zoning ordinances, how detailed they could be. They could go on and on and on with all the nuances that are particular to this specific town. Uh, and and in, in, in some cases by this act, these ordinances will no longer exist. I don't understand though, um, because of how high rent is and the loss that people are going through and everything that is entailed in that, I don't understand why somebody would prohibit that. They're not concerned with that, with the renters. It's the owners that's profit from it, and they're allowed to do whatever they want because there's no restriction. Okay, but how, no, so nobody wants to, to, to do anything? They just... Is it Florida? Florida I, I don't understand. I, I guess I'll, I'll Sad, just have to yeah. go to, um, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I went to law school in Virginia, and I used to go to D.C. for open house at Capitol Hill and meet all the senators and things, and um, I haven't been there in many, many years, but I I did change a law with, with the euthanization of animals, had that they would be throwing them in a cham chamber, and um, I got them to stop that in you know like for humane you know it's it's an animal it's something but it's something you know and i feel very strongly about how i feel about that yeah. so hopefully i get the opportunity to go to dc to the legislative well, and madam chair th these are these are all florida laws mm -hmm. 
enacted by our, our our Florida legislature. Yeah. Well, hopefully I can get there because <laughs> there's somebody that needs to stand up. I mean, it's it's absolutely absurd. Yeah. It's absolutely absurd, and I mean, I'm just gonna voice my my opinion. You know. Uh, lastly, a bit of good news, Madam Chair. Last year, <laughs> uh, lastly, there's there is a state appropriation of funds that comes with this law okay. where they're appropriating over 700 million dollars uh, to, to this uh, private uh, public private entity that administers in part ship funds ship funds are important to local governments because they allow local governments to uh, spearhead or provide grants for um, different housing projects and 252 million dollars are being allocated toward uh, ship funds to be uh, to be spread out throughout municipal to be spread to municipalities throughout the state and what do they do with the funds well ship funds well they'll they'll decide which how many how much of those 252 million dollars will go to each uh, you know, county and municipality within the state and then once it comes like for instance when it comes to the town of Pembroke Park that the, there, there's certain ship Guidelines that they have to follow with the, with uh, expending these funds, uh, but they but they go toward housing projects. So do 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 we collaborate with the developers with that money, or is it an initiative for the buyer to buy well, that property, or what? No, the 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 town will create its own program. Okay. Um, pe different. As long as it comes within the guidelines of, you know, the overarching guidelines of what the funds should be allocated for, uh, but they they've gone to help homeowners directly. They've gone to help to create affordable housing buildings. Uh, they, they, a lot of different places have used them for. Um, a lot of different municipalities have used these funds for different purposes. Uh, you, they just have to fall in line with I guess the it's overarching guidelines. The city and what we need right. their needs for the city and the right. people. Yes. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you for the time. Okay, so open for no. no? Okay. So that's it. So new business. Where am I at? Okay, so any new business? No. No. Okay, so the time is 7.15, and we can adjourn. Thank you. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. And everyone in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> All right. <laughs>